Morning you guys. Um, I've had quite a few guys contact me about jetting on these 3236 Weber carbs. Um, I'll give him the jet chart that I've got, but it doesn't work on their carbs and all kinds of stuff. And the reason for that is um, the power valve systems. So what I want to do this morning is I want to explain to you guys the three different power valve systems and what they do and why that actually affects your jetting. Here they are. So I'm doing this in no particular order, but this specific one um, gave me trouble on a carby last week. And it's, it's that one over there. You see there's the port in the flow chamber and it goes up and it goes into the top body of the carb. That's there, that's the top body of the carb. And there's a enrichment tube there. I'll show you one on the actual carb just now. And then over there, number four, that's supposed to be a calibrated bush. Um, I haven't actually seen, I've got quite a few carbs here, none of them has got that bush in, I don't know if the guys remove it or what the story is, but I've also seen different drawings where there's a calibrated bush over there. Um, and what happened with the carby that I struggled with is, is it was just overfueling so much on the second choke um, that at low RPM the car would, didn't actually want to drive properly, it was, it was just stuttering. So um, on that carby, and that's the first carby I've built a lot of these carbs. It's the first one that I've actually plugged that hole. I completely plugged that hole because I just couldn't come right with it. All the others that I've done, and I've done, if I've done 10, I've done 100, I've done 200 of them. And they work fine. They, they work fine. So for whatever reason, that one um, over, overfueled bad because you can see there, that's where the fuel coming on top of the carby. And I'll show you now. So there's the hole in the flow chamber and it goes through that port and there's the, sorry, there's the hole where it goes to the top part of the carby and that calibrated orifice or calibrated jet supposed to sit in there. As you can see there's nothing in there and I've got four or five other car bodies here that doesn't have anything in there. But like I say some of them sit in the top part of the car but that's the one. So on that carver that I was struggling, I actually closed that hole completely. And then I jetted it as if it obviously didn't have that enrichment system. And it works fine. Tested the car, ran it for about a week on my van. And it works brilliant. So that can give you a lot of headaches. That can give you a lot of headaches. Just, just be, keep, be mindful of it. So in the carb top, that's the two tubes. That's the two enrichment tubes that you saw in the drawing. Um, I believe some of them... It's got a calibrated bush inside there. I've never opened one to have a look, um, but I believe they do. And if you rev it up and open the second choke, you'll see this fuel squirting out of there. That gives you more fuel on your second choke. When you use this on a small vehicle, um, it can give you hassle. So, like I say, out of all the carbies that I've done, I've only had one that, that gave me trouble. Only one. So uh, just be mindful of that when you do jetting. That can muck you around a lot. So like I say, out of all the carbs that I've done, I've only had one that gave me troubles. Um, it's a good thing. Uh, they, they, they are calibrated for the vehicle that it was made for in the factory. So now you and I take the carby. We don't know where it's from. We don't know what, what, what car it came off. And now we want to put it on that car over there. It's not really meant for there, so we've got to jet it for there. And then obviously, um, now the enrichment system doesn't work and we struggle with the carb, so... Just keep mindful of that. Um, people use it very successfully on turbocharging um, because when you when you boost, you need extra fuel and that gives you extra fuel. Difficult to regulate it, but people use it for that. The other enrichment system is the one that sits in the float bowl, in the bottom of the float bowl with the spring. I'll show you that now, but how it works. From the bottom of the choke, when the butterfly is closed, there's obviously loads of vacuum and, and that loads of vacuum gets transferred into that port there and there's a little diaphragm over there that diaphragm because there's now loads of vacuum there pulls this little piston there's the little piston pulls that little piston up and then that valve there is closed um, let me show you what they look like so that valve that valve sitting over there looks like that and, and it gets pushed by this. See, this one is nearly stuck. Get pushed by that diaphragm 
to lift off at low RPM. And as soon as you rev, it lets go and it pushes that needle. And then it lets fuel through here. Let's feel that's in the bottom of the flow chamber. So it lets fuel through there. Through there and into the same chamber as where your main jets are. And, and there in number 16 is the calibrated bush. So, and the problem with this, if it's not the right carb for that application, you put jets in there for the correct application. And that orifice there has got to be the correct size for your application. And the original carbs had a little plate screwed on the side here. That would tell you, it's got a number on and according to the number will tell you what it was jetted for. So now you put it on a different vehicle and that number 16 is not the right calibration for what you need. And you can overfuel or underfuel. Well, it won't underfuel, it can overfuel. Because now the jet sizes is those two jets there plus whatever size that orifice is over there. And like I say, it can ca cause you headaches. On these small engines, on the carbies that I built, uh, every single one I bypass that. Every single one. Um, it just causes problems. I, I just bypass it. Every carb that I built for a small engine, I bypass that because you don't know what that orifice size is. And I'll show you now, it's nearly impossible to check. So there is that pin in the bottom of the carby, and that calibrated bush sits inside there. Sits inside this one is a 38 D gas, so it obviously has two. Um, but it sits inside there and you don't know what size it is you have no idea what size it is here's one for the 32 Weber and it sits inside there 32, 36 this is it sits inside there so and this will obviously enrich your uh, on this one it would have enriched your first joke yeah, second choke. It would have enriched the first choke, this one. Um, so yeah, it can it can give you problems. That's the the spring. There's a diaphragm below there. It gets the air through that hole, and then from the bottom of the below the butterfly. The third one works with a. And not all the carbies has got it. Um, it works with a, through the accelerator pump jet. Um, so the carby has got an extra additional diaphragm on the side with a little pipe that also goes to below the butterfly and, and on the second choke. And then when you go full throttle, when at, at, at low RPM with the butterfly closed, there's loads of vacuum there, so it pulls the diaphragm. Um, and then as soon as the butterfly opens and the vacuum drops, the spring pushes the the diaphragm back and it squirts additional fuel through your accelerator pump. I'll show you how that works. So there it sits. And like I say, not all the carbies has got them. Um, some of them has got that casting, but the holes are not open and others doesn't have that casting at all, just depending on what model you've got. Um, this is a 38 D gas, so it obviously has it. And there's the tube that goes in below the, the butterfly, it picks up your vacuum. This draws the, the little diaphragm. The diaphragm looks like that. It's this old one. And then inside there, there's a spring. Um, and then obviously it pulls back. And then as soon as th that butterfly opens and the vacuum drops, the spring pushes and it squirts additional fuel through your accelerator pump. Uh, um, that nozzle. So the channel, this is an old carby. You can see it's all broken. The channel for that goes there. Then they've drilled it into the same, the same, you can see the direction that it goes, goes into the same hole as that. So on a progressive carby, first choke is open, it squirts fuel. And then once the second choke opens, spring releases, then it squirts more fuel. On every carb that I built for a small engine, I block it off just like that. Um, because it's just too much fuel for these small engines. So there you have it. Um, these power valve systems are brilliant. It is actually what sets a Weber apart from the other carbs. Um, other carbs do have it, um, but these work real simple. And like I say, there's a lot of people that use these some of these power valve systems 
for additional fuel on turbocharged applications. Um, I built most of these carbs for small engines and I found over the years that the power valve mostly just gives too much fuel and you pick up a stutter and the vehicle is heavy on fuel. Um, I've had I've had with these uh, 32, 36 Webers and a 36 DC 7 which doesn't have the power valve system, that I get up to 13, 13 and a half kilometers to a liter and then it still gives you brilliant power, way better than the standard carb. But then of course I disable the power valve systems and I jet as if that power valve system never existed. Anyway, I hope this helps someone. Be safe. Have a good day.